I'm Sarah, and this is Catch Up, where we give you all your Hollywood news and Indian updates. On today's show, you'll find out what goes on in Trish Duber's high school art class and see some of the artistic abilities of today's students. You'll also find out what movies you shouldn't miss and can you say please pay promptly four times fast? All that coming up next. It's amazing how talented these kids are. Hi, my name is Trish Stuber and I'm an art teacher at Norwood High School. And I teach Art 1, Art 2, Basic Drawing and Advanced Placement Studio Art. This is my second year at Norwood High School. Um, I was a police officer for um, almost 15 years and a juvenile probation officer. And I was on the Hamilton County SWAT team for eight years. I went back and got my master's at Xavier University because this is what I've always wanted to do. I really believe I'm a much better teacher at this point in my life than I would have been um, without all the previous life experiences that I've had in law enforcement. My favorite thing about teaching, um, clearly it is the interaction with the students. I think I learn as much from them as they learn from me. I absolutely love being in the classroom interacting on a day-to-day -day basis with the students. Um, even when you know, they're, they're struggling, I like to be the one that is there for them, to offer them encouragement, to inspire them. I like to create an environment, a safe environment, um, a, a nice place, a happy place where they can come and create art. I'm Jacob Brooks. I'm working on a concentration that is going to be basically a tribute to all the musical artists that have really made a difference in my life. That's Freddie Mercury and uh, you know, lead singer Queen. Queen has uh, really influenced the way I play and listen to music and you know, I need something that I can do a bunch of stuff about. I like just drawing pencil. Watercolor is fun, but it's a pain sometimes. <laughs> For the most part, I just do pencil and charcoal is cool too sometimes. These are two people from our class, well, from our school, and they were modeling, and I just liked the way they were. They came off all the pages, and I added color to everything because Ms. Duber is always color. I think it's important for students to learn art. Because, like I said before, this is one classroom where every single student can find success. You have to solve problems. And, and honestly, that's what students need to be to be successful in the world. They need to be creative problem solvers. Um, to realize that sometimes in life you have to do things that you don't want to do when it's not fun and when it's not easy and when it's not convenient. It just pushes them to kind of climb outside the box that they're in or stretch the rubber band a little bit to grow and to problem solve and to make positive decisions. My name is Eric Atkins. Um, these are my three favorite pieces. This is um, two of my friends that we had to do, they posed for us and we had to draw them and I chose to do charcoal. This is a sunset in the Florida Keys and this is me doing a little fishy face. I chose to do this one because I'm a really funny guy and I don't think anything else would explain how I am. This was one of my summer assignments that I did. They're twins, and they're singers. And then this was one of my um, concentration pieces that I'm doing. My concentration is music, and these are two of my friends that I took a picture of. I want to go to school and major in art. You actually learn things about art in this class. Every other class, it's always the same thing. They just hand you stuff and tell you to do it, but in this, you actually progress. My favorite kind of art to teach, um, I love drawing. I love painting. I love mixed media. I, lo I love teaching the art ones because they come in, 
as a fresh slate, a fresh canvas, and I love being responsible for teaching them the basics of what they need to know. And then I absolutely love teaching the advanced placement studio art um, kids because that is a college level class and it allows me to help them and inspire them to prepare a portfolio that they would be proud of to display in our um, annual art expo in May or for those that want to go on and uh, apply to art colleges, help them pursue that dream. These are my concentration in their clothes and I did it because I'm really good at drawing clothes. This is a picture of myself and it's um, charcoal. Like two years ago I didn't really think anything about art but now I see like the line quality and everything that you have to do to make a good art piece. This is just a piece I did on my own. Nicole Kidman and I did in watercolor and pencil. I just like painting and drawing and stuff. These kids just wow me with their talents and abilities every single day. I truly believe that based on our student population, we have such a, a high number of kids that are gifted in many, many different ways, but especially in the arts. My name is Carmen Hood. That's my friend Jacob. And that's another piece, like a vampire like attacking someone. And that one's like supposed to be a self-portrait, but it doesn't look like me at all. My concentration are just songs that I like or have influenced me. This piece is here. This is the Blink-182 song, Rise Against, and another Blank. Right now I'm working on one from Linkin Park. I like art a lot because I'm not really good at a lot of other things, but I can draw pictures. And that's nice. I'm thinking about going into college as an art major. I think it's really important for um, people to understand that in the art classroom, it's not about kids just coming in and doing whatever they want. We have an entire book of academic content standards that we hit and are required to hit on a daily basis. With a discipline-based art education, you know, this is the basis of what we do and how we teach art and why we do it. And basically, art education is based on four different components, and those components are art production and art history, art criticism and analysis, and aesthetic awareness. And of course, the art production is they actually learn the actual process of making art. And that is very important to get that tactile thing happening, the eye-hand coordination. And then the art history piece is that um, when the students learn about the rich heritage of the past, that can serve an, as an inspiration to them as they learn about art in today's date. Um, they are gradually introduced to more complex concepts and they'll learn about principles and elements of design and how to integrate those into their actual works that they're working on. The art criticism and analysis piece is where they actually learn how to talk about and critique their own work and the work of others and to do it in a respectful manner using the language of art and they learn the art vocabulary. And then the last piece is the aesthetic awareness and that is where you would call it the philosophy of art where the student really gets to form their opinion based on what they believe what is art. One of the things that I love about art is it's not like math where there is clearly a right and wrong answer. There are many different ways to solve the problem. These are not classes that they come in and they don't work. It is a rigorous uh, curriculum and the results in the body of work that the students produce is nothing short of amazing.
Our annual Art Expo is coming up. It'll be Sunday, May 3rd um, at Norwood High School and Norwood Middle School from 12 to 4 on Sunday, May 3rd. And the talent that is showcased musically and artistically is phenomenal and we would love everybody in the community to come out and to support our students in their artistic endeavors. Our Lady Indians are surely keeping the spirit alive on the basketball court. On January 21st, the ladies played a match against SCPA and had a tremendous victory with the ending score of 57 to 29. Although the Indians played a competitive game on January 24th against the Mount Healthy Eagles, they fell short with the ending score being 40 to 30. But our junior varsity Lady Indians were able to bring home a win that night again to Mount Healthy with the final being 45 to 35. On January 26th, the two teams flip-flopped the wins and losses while playing Aiken, leaving the varsity girls with a close match in the score being 38 to 34 Aiken. The junior varsity basketball team defeated Aiken 37 to 24. The current varsity record is four and nine, and the current junior varsity record is six and five. Keep up the hard work, ladies. Norwood Varsity Boys Basketball received a victory on January 21st against SCPA. The final score being a huge win, 55 to 29. On the 24th, they had a tougher time playing the Ross Rams. They lost with a close score being 57 to 49. The current varsity record is 6 and 6, and the current junior varsity record is 3 and 8. Our Indian wrestlers competed well at Bellbrook Invitational. Tyler Alsip was named Most Outstanding Wrestler and was the winner of his 125 weight class. Victor Dornetti finished third place, and Connor Majelic finished fourth place at Bellbrook. Congratulations to Allison Miller and Stephen Cox. Both athletes were nominated for WLWT Channel 5 Student Athletes of the Week. Senior Allison has a 4.6 GPA and plays soccer, basketball, and softball. She is the captain for the teams and is also a member of the Anthony Munoz Foundation and the National Honor Society. Junior Steven holds a 3.9 GPA and runs for cross country and is a wrestler. Steven is a returning league champion for the Norwood wrestling team and also a district qualifier. Great job, Allison and Steven. Congratulations to Andy Wilms for being named the Anthony Munoz Division III Defensive Lineman of the Year. This is a great accomplishment, and Andy will be honored on February 17th at the Hilton in a special ceremony that will include many of Cincinnati's finest players. Great job, Andy. Which breakfast cereal was Sunny the Cuckoo Bird Cuckoo for? Cocoa Puffs. Tricks. Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> Cocoa Puffs. Cocoa Puffs. The answer is Cocoa Puffs.
The month of February has tons of new CD releases that many of you have anticipated for a while now, and they are finally here. Grammy Award-nominated rock American band The Fray from Denver, Colorado will be releasing a new self-titled CD on February 3rd. A young singer, Lily Allen, has a new hit that won't be in stores until February 9th, but is already receiving great reviews of the album, It's Not You, It's Me. Get ready for the biggest block party of the year. Missy Elliott is back. Listen to her brand new single, Best Best. This track is off her upcoming album, Block Party, which is in stores and online February 9th. A popular rock band, Thursday, who recently just released a single in December, will be releasing a new album in mid-February called Common Existence. Lionel Richie will release his newest album in two years called Just Go on February 17th. And lastly, at the end of the month, Hatebreed releases For the Lions on February 24th. Good luck to all the artists out there with any upcoming release for this month. We look forward to listening and enjoying the music. Can you say, please pay promptly four times fast? Please pay promptly, please pay promptly, please pay promptly, please pay promptly. Please pay promptly, please pay promptly, please play promptly, please pay promptly. <laughs> please play promptly, please play promptly, please play promptly, <laughs> please play promptly. Please pay promptly, please pay promptly, please pay promptly, please play promptly. <laughs> please pay promptly, please pay promptly, please pay promptly, please pay promptly. Please pay promptly, please pay promptly, please pay promptly, please pay promptly. Please pay promptly, please pay Play promptly, please play promptly, please play promptly. Please play, please pay promptly, please pay promptly, please pay promptly, please play promptly. <laughs> please pay promptly, please play promptly, please play promptly, please play promptly. This February, make sure you have your movie date for Valentine's Day because you don't want to miss any of these great new releases. What does a girl do when her purchasing sprees have put her into debt? Get a job as a financial advice columnist, of course. Confessions of a Shopaholic starring Isla Fisher is scheduled to hit the big screen on February 13th. When Isla, who plays Rebecca in the film, becomes an advice columnist at a financial magazine published by the same company as her favorite fashion mag magazine, her fresh approach strikes a chord with readers and she quickly becomes the toast of the town. While Rebecca learns the ups and downs of business and her love life, she gradually realize, realizes her priorities in life. Jason Voorhees returns to theaters with this Platinum Dunes remake to once again haunt the cursed campgrounds of Crystal Lake. Friday the 13th, starring actor Jared Padalecki and actress Danielle Panabaker, hits the theaters on, of course, February 13th. Tyler Perry transitions another one of his hit plays to the big screen with this adaption of Medea Goes to Jail. The successful filmmaker stars once again as the mischief-prone older woman who exploits this time lead her in jail, where she befriends and reforms a prostitute named Candy, played by Keisha Knight Pullman from The Cosby Show. This Lionsgate comedy film will be in the theaters on February 20th. Popular American boy band the Jonas Brothers are getting their first spot in theaters on February 27th with the movie Jonas Brothers The 3D Concert Experience. The brothers star in a high-energy Walt Disney Picture documentary feature film event from director Bruce Hendricks, which blends excerpts from the brothers' Red Hot Burning Up concert tour. It also includes guest performances by country singer Taylor Swift, plus a never-before-heard song Love Is On Its Way. This film will be sure to have all their fans excited to see the life of Kevin, Joe, and Nick behind the scenes. Don't forget to see these new motion pictures coming soon to a theater near you. It is now the start of February, and that means more birthdays to celebrate. Actor and comedian Polly Shore will be turning 41 on the first of the month. Brandon Lee would have celebrated his birthday with Polly, turning 44 also on the 1st. Singer Shakira will be 32 years old on February 2nd. And popular sitcom actress of the show Friends, Jennifer Aniston, will be 40 on February 11th. 
Retired professional basketball star Michael Jordan will be turning 46 on February 17th, along with Drew Barrymore, who will turn 34 on February 22nd. Actress on the CBS hit series Ghost Whisperer, Jennifer Love Hewitt will be turning 30 on February 21st. Grease star John Travolta will also be celebrating his birthday on February 18th, and he will be turning 55 this year. Happy birthday from everyone at Catch Up to all the celebrities with a birthday in February. Don't miss the next show where we'll tell you how your Indian athletes did in this year's tournaments. And also, if you'd like to be a part of our show or have any ideas for Catch Up, please give us a call at 396-7509 or stop in the studio. Thanks for catching up with us, and we'll see you next time.